The needs of infrastructure is very large in Asia. Hence, it is very important for us to figure out a way how to contribute to narrowing the needs and this is the genesis of where the growing infra costs because we felt that the private sector could play a bigger role. Unlike other regions where 50 to 60 percent of infrastructure needs are met by private sector, in Asia it's only about 10 percent and this growing infrastructure cost hopefully contributes to raising the government's awareness not just with meeting the infrastructure needs but in terms of the post-COVID recovery which could be infra net and their abilities to draw private sector into their infrastructure. We are very honoured to be the partner for the Growing Infrastructure course because what makes SMU so special is we are actually six different schools and for this programme it's actually interdisciplinary. We have the business school and definitely the financing angle is critical. We also have the School of Economics and then public-private partnerships become a very critical element. On top of that we have our legal law school because every time you build an infrastructure project it's actually different stakeholders. And last but not least, we have our Information Systems School. And if you look at the way forward for infrastructure, it's actually very much dependent on new technologies and building smart cities. So the whole agenda that is being planned out really tap on the strengths of SMU. From the World Bank's perspective, our mission is to take the longer term view and partner with countries in finding the best development approaches. And we're very happy to partner with Infrastructure Asia and the Singapore Management University on this initiative. On our part, I think there are three elements in particular that we would like to bring in. First, identify the right participants. Second, look at content in particular, leveraging our global expertise and global knowledge. And the third, which is really important when we look at capacity building courses, that this not be a one-off exercise. So we welcome participants to come to this course, but what will really be important is that we can also work with them in actual real applications when they go back. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a global recession and in the midst of this deep downturn, the clean energy sector has been very resilient. The clean energy infrastructure remains a bright spot. We see a lot of interest amongst regional policy makers. There is a need for very careful evaluation and comprehensive frameworks for risk management and for financing. And if done well, PPPs can be very effective in catalyzing infrastructure investments and innovations. We hope that through this course, we learn what to do, what not to do. We also study how Asian countries have actually scaled up the adoption of clean energy, the ones that have been very successful in developing a pipeline of bankable projects. And in the process, we will build a knowledge hub and a learning network for infrastructure development in the region. Public-private partnership is all about trying to get the best of both the public domain of infrastructure and the competencies of the private sector. Some of the projects that we are looking at in the very first round relate to sustainability, green energy, treatment of biomass. For subsequent rounds, we will use some other kind of theme, other kind of objective. So given that there are so many different models, one thing the participants will understand is which of these models is the most suitable for their domain. So the learning is much more nuanced. We want to build an ecosystem where these officials interact with others. It's not only about the learnings that you have in class from us. It's also about these interactions from having a community of senior leaders with the experience in public-private partnerships that, to my mind, will enrich the value delivered from this course. The challenges in infrastructure will be, continue to evolve. And it, what we're really hoping to develop is to leverage the strengths of the private sector in bringing in finance and innovation while grounding all infrastructure development in the ways only governments can do, which is to make sure that they're sustainable, but also deliver for the full range of the population, in particular being inclusive to every part of the population at large. We want to be the catalyst, the facilitator. We bring everyone together so that they could all have multi-nodal approaches to solving their own infrastructure problems. Most importantly, we hope that they remember that Singapore is an oasis of business collaborators that they can come back and again and again to draw from in order to find solutions and partners for their infrastructure projects in the coming years.